people can go temporarily gray from a lot of stress in their life. And so the hair will start to grow gray out the bottom. And then if they relax, go on a vacation, it'll go black again or brown. Gray hair isn't just a cosmetic concern. It's often an indicator of aging at a cellular level. But what if I told you we might have found a way to reverse it? And who better to guide us through this fascinating subject than Dr. David Sinclair, a pioneer in the field of longevity and aging research. So how does this reversal work? And what are the groundbreaking discoveries behind it? We don't really know why hair starts growing in the wrong places, as annoying as it is. Probably, I think what's happening is that we have this evolutionary program where we used to be a lot hairier six to 10 million years ago, and those stem cells are still ready to grow thick hair in our ears, on our nose, wherever it, it, you don't want it to grow. And that the changes in the structure of the, of the DNA, the, what we call the epigenome, is changing over time. And that those regions that are normally silent in the ears, so you don't get big hairy ears, are unraveling as part of the aging process. So shave or pluck that out for now. But that, what that means is we would predict that if we can slow down aging, we should also prevent that process from happening or at least delay it till much later in life. Graying is part of not just a genetic program, but can be accelerated by things that are also known to accelerate aging itself, such as psychological stress. It's been known for probably centuries that you can have these binary colored hairs where they, at the tip of the hair, it's dark and then it's gray in the middle and then dark again at the bottom. And people have wondered what the heck is going on. And just recently in 2021, a group of researchers had a look at what was happening in people's lives during that gray hair growth period. And they found that they were remarkably stressful periods of those people's lives where, where they, they didn't stop working, they didn't, they didn't sleep, they didn't go on a vacation. And so I think it's very clear that stress can induce gray hair or loss of color from the hair. But what's also remarkable about, about that finding is that it proves that gray hair is reversible. That was, an, that was another lab that did that, but it was really interesting so that there were people it's pretty common, actually, that people can go temporarily gray from a lot of stress in their life. And so the hair will start to grow gray out the bottom. And then if they relax, go on a vacation, it'll go black again or brown. And you get this hair that's brown, gray, brown. So the, the, this researcher and his team plucked these hairs out and looked at what was going on at the molecular level and could see that there were changes that were associated with aging and its reversal, and which is exciting because it if we can understand how this happens, we could not just reverse gray hair, uh, but also other aspects of aging in the body. I mean, anything that is genetic is, is essentially irreversible. So this is an epigenetic effect. What I would imagine is that after you've been gray for many, many years, it's gonna be very difficult to reverse that. But in the early phases, when you're getting this spattering of gray and color, gray and color, you are able to get those those packages of DNA back to where they were when you were young using some of the methods that we're talking about today. And the prevailing theory as to why we get gray is that these melanocytes die through a process called apoptosis. Hopefully that isn't true. I think it's true for very late in life, but what we're seeing in this new study is that they become dysfunctional before they die. And that's a period that we have a chance to recover their function uh, and prevent them from dying. And there are a number of ways that I could think of at least to reverse that and prevent them from dying. One way, though, would be to use some of these adversity mimetics to get that epigenome to reset. Turns out it's called tacrolimus, which is a very similar molecule to rapamycin, or also known as serolimus, which we've mentioned in earlier episodes, is one of the main drugs that can extend lifespan and inhibit this complex of proteins called mTOR that responds to fasting. It's making your stem cells freak out that things are going to be rough and maybe we should be rejuvenated and start growing a little better. I just want to mention this cyclosporin A, it's really interesting. You said it's an immunosuppressant. It's used to prevent organ rejection. In my lab, we found it also rejuvenates mitochondria through actually making sure that what's called the mitochondrial permeability transition pore, or MPTP, is preserved. Long story short, I think this combination of cyclosporin A for mitochondrial activity, minoxidil, which we've talked about is blood flow, improved blood flow, and this pigment-promoting promoting drug, which is basically a, an analog of rapamycin, which simulates a, a fasting response, is the triple combo for hair repigmentation. People are already trying rapamycin as a drug, 10 milligrams uh, every week or so. This is, this is only being done by a few people under doctor supervision. But I could imagine that there will be products of, made available 
to the general public one day that would definitely restore hair color. It's not a miracle that this happens. It's just science and we're going to figure it out. And another important point is that when we learn how to reverse aging in the skin and rejuvenate the hair and get it to produce more color, those lessons can be, apl can be applied across the body because all cells have a fundamental root cause of aging and the same defense pathways against that process. So for instance, rapamycin, cyclosporin, minoxidil, these could be used perhaps in really low doses and under clinical conditions tested to see if they have rejuvenating effects in other organs as well. So there you have it, folks. Dr. David Sinclair and his team are at the forefront of a revolution in anti-aging research, offering hope for a future where gray hair might become a relic of the past Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into cutting edge science and technology. Until next time, stay curious and be optimal 